got a score to settle with that son of a bitch. Devil May Cry. What's up you guys, this is your boy RBG hitting you up with another Devil May Cry related upload. We've been covering a lot of ground and coming up with theories on the specific timeline and where the characters have been, to which I have to go out of my way and say thank you to the viewers who understood the question I asked. In the previous upload we were trying to guess when exactly this game would take place in the DMC mythos, and there were some of you who were stating the obvious about how DMC 5 takes place several years after part 4. That was a no brainer considering the overall look of the characters. The real question was if the latest entry in the Sons of Sparta saga would take place between the events of Devil May Cry 4 and 2 or after part 2. So I just wanted to clear that up since there aren't that many fans who are familiar with the franchise's chronology. As promised in today's upload I'm going to be going over some theories on who the mystery character named V could possibly be. But before we jump into the topic at hand I want to remind you that I'm giving away free mouses. Since you guys have supported this channel I've linked up with Mono to give you their brand new gaming mouse. It features a high FPS rate, 7 different switches such as the back and forward button, an adjustable DPI, micro switches back with LED lights, and much more. You only have to pay for the shipping and handling which averages around $5 depending on your location. The link will be in the description box below so make sure you jump on that while the offer lasts. But getting back on track, the DMC community has been trying to come up with theories on who the new character only promotional art could be. Since Devil May Cry 5's announcement, the only details we got about the character is that his name is V. A pretty strange name that has created a lot of speculation going around the internet. Upon first glimpse, the character looks like he could possibly possess some outlandish abilities based on the markings on their arms. They look like they would perform some kind of magic that could prove to be one of his techniques. Because of the tattoos, many have assumed that V could possibly be Shimigami Tensei III's central protagonist, the Demi Fiend. A character whose personality is defined based on the player's actions and decisions. I've never played the game, but Demi Fiend is known to be a multiversal being who's become an imminent threat to God in the quote unquote great will. And one of the things fans have been using to corroborate their theory of Demi Fiend being V is his tattoos. And there's also the fact that Devil May Cry 2's Dante makes a special guest appearance in the game. Now this could be used to cement the claim that Demi Fiend will be in DMC5, because after their epic battle Dante tells him if they both manage to survive the labyrinth of Amala, he's sure they'll meet again. I'm pretty certain the majority of you are familiar with how Capcom is notorious with their crossovers and Dante is no exception in that. Some have officially been made canonical like Final Fight crossing over with the Street Fighter series while others are just for all intents and purposes fan service. We've seen Hideki Kimiya use Dante in Beautiful Joe since he does have parallels to the character Blade Master Alistair, specifically the sword Alistair from Devil May Cry 1 and how the Blade Master is essentially a manifested spirit of the sword. Like there are a ton of other crossovers but, and this is a huge but, none of them were officially confirmed to be part of the Devil May Cry canon. I mean it would make sense if the Demi Fiend somehow returned to aid Dante and Nero in their mission, but there's too many things that don't add up. Like how is Dante roaming around the Vortex world in SMT3 when the last time we saw him he was stuck inside the Demon Realm in DMC2? And based on the abilities V is said to have in DMC5, the Demi Fiend simply does not, which I'm now going to delve into. And less than 24 hours ago, SegmentNext.com released an article giving more details on not only V's abilities but also his true name, saying that his actual name is Vitel. It also says that he wields the ability to use calls and spells in order to kill his enemies. These attributes will put him more in the realm of a zoning character with mechanics that prove to be similar to Lady and Trish, as opposed to Dante and Nero's all around style of range and close quarters combat. Now this is something that I'm looking forward to seeing. I'm interested in knowing if all three playable characters missions will consist of backtracking where we will essentially have to play the stages that we've completed the first go around, or will each protagonist feature completely different stages that feature contact sensitive enemies like in Devil May Cry 4. I'm hoping for the latter because I'm so burnt out on replaying the same levels. It's bad enough that you have to repeat missions with two characters, but three characters is just overkill. This is what I'd expect in something like a special edition since making new stages for additional characters is a lot of work, but if Capcom has been developing this game for over 4 years, the least they can do is give each character their own specific level, and it wouldn't hurt to add different themes for all three protagonists, I'm just saying. But anyways, Vitel will be able to summon demons right inside enemies causing them to be torn apart from the inside out. As to how this style will play out will prove to be cool yet confusing, because Devil May Cry is a very fast paced game that provokes the player to be stylish as possible. So there has to be a certain way Vitel chants his spells, whether they be light spells that can be spammed as melee attacks or spells that'll take time to build up. 
it does kind of put me in the mind of another Capcom title called Chaos Legion, where the main character Sieg wields the ability to summon demons from alternate worlds called Chaos Legions. It's a pretty action-oriented game that spawns these massive waves of enemies on the player. The legions of demons that you summon were effective, but they were limited in control. Their tactics could be switched between offensive and defensive, and players can issue orders for them to attack immediately. While the legions were inactive, your character could perform a sort of special attack called an assist attack, which causes the legion to appear and attack with him. The only drawback to the Chaos Legion ability is the fact that it disables you to run and your melee attacks become weaker. If Hideaki Asuna were to potentially implement this type of playstyle, I think it would be embraced to the fullest. It was definitely a game that presented some awesome ideas that didn't quite stick their landing and I think it's something that Isano could actually transfer over and refine in DMC5. As I mentioned in my last video, as bad as the mechanics in DMC2 were, Hideaki Isono took those ideas and made them better. If he does in fact borrow elements from Chaos Legion, I'd love for the soul meter to be implemented and the counter system which gives the player more experience when you hit an enemy at the same time they attack. And I think a little more free control over the demons would be nice too. Now the only info that's uncertain is if Vitale will possess sword slashing melee attacks or strictly spell castings. Because the article doesn't particularly mention anything else outside of his summonings. Like I'm gonna be pissed if he doesn't have some form of a melee weapon or a sword. Speaking of swords, I'd like you to take a close look at V's right hand in the promotional art. It looks like he's carrying a sword that most fans, including myself, are assuming to be Virgil's Yamato. It specifically looks like the end of the Yamato sheath with it being an aquatic blue and a roundish tip at the end also. If it is in fact the famous realm slashing sword, it answers our question on its whereabouts since most assumed it was still locked away inside Nero's Devilbringer. Now as to Vitel's identity however, it's still a mystery. One of the wildest theories that I've come up with is that he could potentially be the reincarnation of Virgil. The last time we saw Dante's evil twin, he was under the control of the Prince of Darkness, Mundus. As we all know, at the end of DMC 3 secret ending, Virgil found himself trapped in a demon world. Mundus appears, glares down on him silently with his triple-eyed avatar. Virgil challenges him in a battle, though this battle was left on a cliffhanger. But it was later established that he was defeated due to being weakened and transformed into Nello Angelo, leading into the events of Devil May Cry. In his final confrontation with Dante, Nello Angelo looked like he was trying to gain his sanity only to explode after being defeated. It's not really confirmed as to if he died or his soul simply hovered off into another host. Some theories have implied that his soul resides in the Yamato since anytime Nero uses it we see the spirit of Virgil's devil trigger hovering behind him. There's also the fact that you can hear his voice when Nero taps into the power. So seeing how Vitel is wielding what looks to be like the Yamato, it would be cool if he's actually Virgil reincarnated. Another theory that seems to be getting a lot of buzz is that he could potentially be the son of Dante and Lady. Which I gotta admit is kinda reaching but hey, who knows. To me, if he was in fact the son of Dante, I'd expect him to possess the signature silver hair that every descendant of Sparta bears nowadays. But in the promo art, it looks like he has black hair, which could be a trait he inherited from his theoretical mother, Lady. We still don't have a full frontal shot of his face, so if it is in fact Dante and Lady's son, I'm expecting to see a face that looks similar to Dante's, and maybe he could have the red and blue pupils in his eyes similar to what Arkham and Mary had. If Dante and Lady were to have gotten busy procreating, it'd probably be around the events of Devil May Cry the anime, and Vitel would probably be a few years younger than Nero who was said to be around 18 or 19 in his debut in Devil May Cry 4. If anything, I just hope there's layers to Vitale's backstory since DMC5 is going to be wrapping up the Sons of Sparta saga. But anyways, the article says that there will be 31 missions in total, 10 for each of the characters and there will be a prologue for Nero, a kind of training mission so to speak. Once again, I hope these will be original stages for all of the characters. It also states that Dub Me Cry is the first game in the franchise in which all models have been scanned in order to make the realistic characters. And it'll be the first game in the franchise to be rated 18 plus, even though the previous games had plenty of bad mouthing and explicit content. I didn't mention this in my other videos, but shortly after DMC5's announcement, aspiring UK model Adam Cowie announced that he'd be providing his likenesses for Dante. It's also been confirmed that UK fitness model and travel blogger Carlo Baker will be doing the same for Nero. Now this is pretty cool because it does give the characters more distinctiveness, and if Devil May Cry is going for a more realistic aesthetic, it needs to have some decent looking guys. But nonetheless, the voice and motion capture actors will be reprising their respective roles, so it's all good. As far as the new 18 plus rating is concerned, I think the vulgar language will be dialed up a little more. 
probably on the same level as the DMC reboot with a few F-bombs here and there. Hopefully not too much though. But anyways, I think I've rambled on long enough. What are your thoughts on Vitale? Do you think his gameplay style will be awesome? And could he possibly be a descendant of Sparta? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future content. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media platforms with all your friends and followers. I love what I do and I do it all for you guys. Once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.